Hi and welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to discover how to age well, look and feel good for longer and share what I find with you. And today I'm talking about a microneedling facial with a difference. And that's because this one involves microneedling an exosome serum into the skin to turbocharge the results. It's clear from some of the medicines and treatments already on the market and in the pipeline that stem cells, exosomes and growth factors are going to play a big role in the future of health and cosmetic care. So it's no surprise to see these treatments cropping up in aesthetics clinics, although not everyone is on board yet. So firstly, I'm going to take you inside the Dr. Victoria clinic as I get the treatment done so you can see what was involved. I'll explain how the exosome serum is sourced and how it works and we'll look at safety as well as those all important results. So a couple of months back, I was invited along with other journalists and content creators to the Dr. Victoria Clinic in Edinburgh to the launch event for their brand new exosomes facial treatment. Now, I've also been a customer of this aesthetic clinic for a few years and I've had a little Botox done there, um, an all therapy treatment. And it was also where I met Dr. Emmeline, who's frequently contributed to the discussions on this channel. And at that launch event, we watched a demonstration of the new exosomes facial. And as Dr. Victoria was telling us about the serum they were using, I realized it must be made by Calisim. And that's the very same skincare brand that I've been using for the last year. So some of you might remember that their hair serum was behind my dad's incredible results where he regrew a thin but very visible covering of hair at the back of his head where he had been balding. And the serum, also helped restore volume to my husband's hair as well. And they had been microstamping the serum into their scalps to boost its penetration. So I was excited by the idea of what using their facial serum in combination with professional microneedling could do for my skin. So microneedling creates microchannels through the skin barrier, which allows serums to penetrate deeper, boosting the results, or that's certainly the theory. Every night I use Calisim's multi-action cream and have been for the past year. And I had originally only intended to use it for a few months for the purposes of review, but I liked the results on my skin so much that I have kept going with it. And while at 175 pounds or $200 for 50 grams, 20 grams is something like 75 pounds or $85, it's more expensive than I would usually look to pay for a skincare product. I use it sparingly and I do love how it's gradually restored my skin's natural balance and hydration. And that itself has taken years off my skin because naturally hydrated skin is plumper and more youthful looking. And Calisum sells a professional serum for the face, which was what is used for the exosomes facial that I tried. And you can buy it to use at home too. But although I've been meaning to try microneedling with that serum at home, I just never got around to doing it. And that was another reason why getting this done at a clinic was so appealing for me, because it meant that I would actually go through with it. So the Dr. Victoria Clinic offered me a trial session at no charge for the purposes of this review. And spoiler alert, I've already decided to go back and pay for another session because I've been really happy with the results. And a reminder that Callison was formed by parent company Cell Research Corp, who are based in Singapore and have been pioneers in the use of stem cells for medical treatments. So the company's Corlicite treatment is entering phase two trials as part of its FDA application for use as a topical treatment for diabetic foot ulcers. And it's also been fast-tracked by the UK Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, who have awarded it an innovation passport to accelerate the approval process for use on patients. But the products in the skincare range, including in the facial serum, don't contain the actual stem cells, but rather the extracted exosomes, which are harvested from the umbilical cords of red deer, which the company say are free ranging and organically and ethically raised in New Zealand. The umbilical cord would usually be discarded after birth, of course. So they're making good use of a biological waste product and the animals themselves are not involved. All mammals share similar signaling proteins, including those released by stem cells, which are used to communicate with other cells. And stem cell proteins 
have also been found to have regenerative and anti-inflammatory effects on human skin and hair follicles, which is why Cell Research Corp decided to launch a skincare range in addition to their medical treatments. So my facial using the exosome serum was carried out by esthetician Hannah Lee using a microneedling device that could go to a depth of 0.5 millimeters, though she used a slightly shorter depth around my eye area where the skin is thinner and more sensitive and also on my forehead. And the benefit for me of having this done professionally was also that it would be done much more rigorously than I could do myself at home because I have been dabbling with microneedling for some time now and I'm a bit of a coward. So I don't tend to get really stuck in and that means I'm doing a kind of half-baked microneedling session at home. So before a professional microneedling treatment, you're advised to avoid using retinoids for a few days prior to your appointment. And aside from having to wear a very fetching hairnet before we got started, there was no other prep involved. And once we got underway, the microneedling itself did feel scratchy and uncomfortable in places, particularly around my mouth and on my chin, but it was never unbearable and they can adjust the needle depth to make the treatment more comfortable. And Hannah was simply brushing on the callosum serum to a small area of the skin and then microneedling it in before moving on to the next area. And she covered my full face, uh, not my neck, and she was able to do just under my brows, but avoiding the eye socket area. After she finished microneedling, Hannah applied the remaining serum that was left in the little five milliliter vial. And she also applied sunscreen because skin that has just been microneedled is more sensitive to sun exposure. And the appointment lasted around an hour in total. And it's fair to say that at the end, I was lobster red. I do look like I've basically been skiing and I haven't put sunscreen on. You've got the goggle marks, the white of the eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm burnt face. Besides being careful to use sun protection in the days after your microneedling treatment, and ideally after that as well, you should also avoid exercise for 24 hours and don't use swimming pools, spas, or saunas for a couple of days. Basically, you want to avoid irritating your skin further through sweat, heat and chemicals and hot tubs can be hot beds for bacteria too. I was advised to avoid retinoids and acids on my face for at least 48 hours after the treatment and the Dr Victoria Clinic gave me an antibacterial face wash to use for a couple of days and I was told not to wear makeup for at least 24 hours. A single treatment of the exosomes microneedling facial costs around 190 pounds, which would be about $240. And they recommend doing a course of treatments of around a month apart for best results. Now, one thing we know the Callisum Serum helps with is skin healing and reducing inflammation. And I've got to say, that initial lobster redness subsided very quickly. So, you know, within a couple of hours, I was able to go food shopping without anyone giving me strange looks, although my face did look a little more flushed than usual. The next day, there wasn't much to see at all, just slight redness in patches and a little dryness that persisted over a couple of days. Around five days later, I did get a tiny spot under my eye where I noticed that a little needle mark had been left. So that may have been from using my makeup brushes around that area. And it did teach me that I have to be more careful with my aftercare next time. Within a week, once all the dryness had subsided, I started to see the benefits to my skin. And from there, I've had a month of what looks to me like smoother, plumper skin, that makes me want to go back for follow-up treatments as a paying customer. I also think the treatment has evened out the tone of my skin and I noticed the tiny pigmentation marks in particular under my eyes have gone. So I plan to do at least a couple more of these treatments over the next few months and bring you an update on my skin. This for me felt like the perfect treatment to fit in with my skincare routine, which already includes callosum, as I've said. So the fact that my local clinic is now using it too did seem serendipitous, but also shows this treatment is becoming more widely recognized and adopted. But although you can expect to see smoother, brighter and healthier looking skin after a treatment like this with a reduction in fine lines, it is still a superficial treatment. It's not gonna deal with more pronounced sagging and loss of elasticity and volume. And you may justifiably ask, well, wouldn't the microneedling in itself deliver those results? 
And I think microneedling alone would offer many of those benefits. But speaking to the staff at the clinic who have had the treatment done both with and without the serum, they felt the youth of growth factors with microneedling did improve their own results and they've seen that with clients too. And it's something we've certainly seen solid evidence of here with the results of microneedling the hair serum into the scalp. As for safety, it's something I mention every time I discuss callosum or growth factor based serums in general. And I think we do have to be very selective in choosing growth factor products looking at the history and ethics of the firms involved because they're not all the same. But I've taken into account the fact that Callisum is an offshoot of a medical research company whose topical stem cell treatment has already been tested on patients with diabetic ulcers and is going through rigorous safety and efficacy testing for approval by medicines agencies in the US, UK and Europe without any reported safety issues to date. Callison themselves say they see no cause for concern having worked now with thousands of patients and customers over the potential for their products to cause unwanted changes in the skin, but they wouldn't advise using growth factors of any kind on skin with active lesions. And you would want to take medical advice if you have a history of skin lesions too, because they haven't been tested under these circumstances. And it's clear that stem cell and growth factor technology is here to stay and will be used more and more widely for medical and skincare purposes. And I've made a decision to be selective and careful, but to get on board with it. That said, I am intending to build in rest periods. So particularly if I'm having a few more microneedling facials with the exosome serum, I'm going to plan in breaks where I'm not using a growth factor face cream for periods of time as a precaution. And it will also save me some cash too. And I think as we learn more about how active ingredients affect our skin longer term, that the protocols for use will change and we won't necessarily be recommended to use the more potent products every single day, long term, without breaks. Time will tell and for now I think using growth factors in skincare is a very personal decision and if you have concerns there's no harm at all in waiting until we have further data and evidence available to us around safety and efficacy long term. I'll link in the description to some balanced articles that look at safety around using growth factors in skincare and I'll also link to the products discussed in today's video along with more information on the Dr Victoria Clinic. There's also the question of the ability of growth factors to pass the skin barrier, with some critics saying the proteins are too large to penetrate the skin. Microneedling obviously enables deeper penetration in relation to the serums. And for the skin creams, Calisum say they encapsulate the larger weighted proteins and growth factors in a lipid molecule that can carry them through the skin barrier, while the smaller weighted molecules pass through without the need for a delivery system. So I have talked a lot about Callisum over the last year because I, I was sharing updates on my dad and husband's hair results, as well as my own experience of using the face cream. So I will leave it there for a while and I'll return to the subject later in the year. If you've tried a microneedling facial and or growth factor treatments, I'd love to hear in the comments about your experience and whether you were happy with the results. And what's your view on growth factors and their use in skincare? Because it's certainly something we're going to be hearing a lot more about in the years ahead. If you enjoyed this video, then by subscribing, you get access to future content from me as soon as it's published. And by liking this video, you help it reach more people. And for more advice and information around aging well, you can visit my website, honest.scott. For now, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.